What's up, everyone? I'm the Zim, host of Word on the Street podcast, musician, artist from Seattle, Washington. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching this video. This video is designed to show you how to use event Facebook event pages. So let me start off. Um, notice I didn't say how to create Facebook event pages. I said how to use Facebook event pages because I am a performer, artist, and musician, and it's become pretty aware to me that most people under don't understand and underestimate the value of Facebook event pages. We all know that now Facebook has limited the reach of our, you know, pages on our on Facebook. So you have to pay really to get any reach out of it. And this video is kind of a hack, if you will, on how to use Facebook in a DIY kind of way, in a way where you don't have to pay thing for things, but it requires a collective effort to really make happen. So what I'm going to do is hopefully tell you how to do that, how to make this work, how to make Facebook event pages work for you. I think I'll mention a few other things before we get started. A couple things about Facebook event pages. You are, at as of this date, June 23rd, 2016. So as we know, Facebook changes things regularly. But as of right now, this is how this works. You have to remember, Facebook events are designed, or you can only add 500 people personally from your profile. You can only add 500 friends to an event. Facebook event page. This is why it's so important, basically everybody that's involved in the event, to go through their friends list and invite as many of their friends as they can. And I'll say this right now, if you're not using your personal profile, if you're in the game, if you're in this game to create more with what you're trying to do, your music, your art, whatever it may be, and you're not using your personal profile to get the word out, you're leaving opportunity on the table. And I can go into that at a later date, but today we're going to talk about Facebook event pages. The other thing to state right now, Facebook is a very powerful tool, regardless of the pay to play aspect of it now, it, it's still the most powerful tool. And, you know, I am personally, I'm all in when it comes to creating more for your art and music and all that stuff. I'm all in on this, on getting the word out through the internet. If you still have in your mind that flyers and you know hard copy things are the way to get the word out, great, but it's it's dropped down a tier. Right now, I believe this is the best. This is where you need to be investing your energy and time is is through the internet and not on physical copies of things. Whatever money you have to put in a promotion, I would put it into the internet, not into physical copies of things. If you have money to do it all, do it all. Bottom line, the best thing to do is to do it all. But if you can only, if you have to be a narrow wedge of what you can do, do it through that. So, all right, let's get started. I'll probably, I don't, I didn't write anything down. I don't know. This is how I roll. I just kind of go with it and see what happens. So, let's just get started and, and I'll show you more about how to use Facebook event pages to promote your thing that you're doing. All right, let's do it. Remove the camera over here and we'll get started. So I got up here right now, I got an event that um, my band is going to be playing. And first thing to do, so you you want to make sure that you when you create your event, you want to make sure that you're creating it from a, um, a page, not a profile. As of right now, from what I understand about the versus page versus profile events, when you create an event from your personal profile, you it's automatically set to default to private. So you want to make sure it's always public. I've been running to that a lot lately with a lot of local bands and, and artists are creating events and they're trying to share it out to different networks, different things, and it says this thing you're trying to share, attachment is unavailable by the person, and it's like you're wake up, you're not doing it right. Do it. You want it to be on public. They don't even know. They're trying to get the word out and, they, and like who they're trying to share it to is not even seeing their content. So you make sure that you're on public. You want it to be on public. So the best way to make sure that happens is to create the event 
from a page like Morgan Henley presents right here is the page that created this event. So next thing to do, so now you're going to be usually on a lineup with multiple bands, right? That's usually the way it goes. There's usually more than one person involved. So making sure that you're only using one event page for whatever event that you're making. If you create another event page for an event that already has an event page made, you are part of the problem. That, that is not the way to do it. You want to link up with the event page that's already made. So there's a lot of steps before that to make sure that you agree with everything that's promoted, like the poster, only using one poster, all the imagery, all that stuff. You should be only using one thing for all the things you're doing. So that's, that's all done by now. Now it's like somebody, one of the people, the venue or one of the bands created the page, so now you need to link up with it. And a lot of people don't realize this. You go over to this you know, the little three button thing over here, and it says add to page. So if you have multiple pages, like I have multiple pages, and my band page is called the Zim and A-Rock, so I'll add this event to my, you know, band page, the Zim and A-Rock. And there it is. It's in my band pages events, and it also shows up on the side column over here. Do -do -do -do. As you scroll down, it's usually somewhere over here. So like right there, upcoming events, Brody Nation, right there. I did not create this event. But it, now it's it's living on my event page. Something to be aware of. A lot of people don't realize that. They create another event on their own page. So you don't need to do that. And you shouldn't be doing that. You should be doing one event page. Collective, collective efforts here. So let's go back to that event. And now it's time to add people to the event. So it's important. I think I mentioned already. It's important. Everybody that's involved with the event should be adding people to the event. There's a couple reasons for this, because you're limited to 500 per person, so you need multiple people to add their friends to do, to do it. The next reason is because people want to be involved with things other people are involved with. The average person out there that's going to shows and wants to do that thing, you have to look outside of the artist mentality. You don't have the capability to think the way just the average person wants to think, and the average person wants to go somewhere where there's lots of people. So if there's a whole bunch of people invited to and reacting to this event page. In their minds, they're saying, hey, this is a place that I want to go because there's people there. People seem excited about this thing. I want to make, I want to be a part of people. I want to meet somebody. I want to, I don't know. I just want to be where people are. You know, as, us as artists, we don't see it that way. We usually have a skewed viewpoint on what it means to go to events. A lot of times we'd rather be performing than in the audience. But there's a lot of people out there that want to be in the audience where there are other people. So that means as many people as possible need to be focusing their energy on these one event page and, and, and raising these numbers. People interested, people going, people invited need to be risen up. And the way you know to invite people, it says it right there, invite, you choose your friends. So there it is. It'll bring up your list of friends. Okay, here's the, the potential tedious part. There is at times Facebook will allow, see, I've already invited most of my 500 limit left, but here's where Facebook makes it difficult for us, right? They want us to put in some work. So this is what it really boils down to. You need to do some work to get all your people invited. And every once in a while, you get this select all right here where it gives you the options. So this right now is a suggested friends list that they're thinking these are the people that might want to go. It doesn't always, for me personally, it doesn't always show a select all option there. Sometimes I have to go individually click every single one of these, however many people I want to invite. The next thing, and then as you see over here on the side column, there's different lists of people that maybe you set up at one time. You can set up lists of people and invite certain groups of people. Like for a long time I had this one, I made a list of Seattle show lists of people that I'll invite to local shows. This list is outdated now because a lot of people have moved and things like that, so I have to fix the list. But that's where you do it. So oftentimes you can get a select all, you can select those groups of people, but sometimes you will have to actually like list all friends. See that select all thing is missing now? I can't do that. So I would have to go through and select individually the people that I want to invite to the friends list. So there's that. That's where the work is. That's where you have to put in the work. So I've already done it, so I've already done it, so I'm not going to invite any more people at this time to this event. The next thing, this is the next piece of how to use the events. My philosophy on event pages is 
once the event page is set up, invite everybody you know at that time. Do not wait. The show starts the moment it's booked. It's no longer it's no longer a show the night of the show. The show starts the moment it's booked. So what are you doing to ramp up to that show? So if you've booked a show three months out, it starts then. So you're thinking about what you need to do to create excitement for that show so that when show night happens, people are, are ready for it. And one of those ways is to get on the event page. I think a lot of people wait for like two weeks out. There's this idea. There's this idea that you, I don't know. There's lots of theories around that. I'll just leave it at that. I say invite it as soon as possible. And the reason you want to do that is, and here's the hack. Here's the hack part of Facebook. Since we know Facebook limits the reach of pages, right? We know that already, unless you pay. But if you're using event pages correctly, this is the hack. This is a way to get around that, to get more people aware of what you're doing without having to pay. And the way to do that is once everybody's invited, you have all these people invited, and until they hit can't go, every time you post a new post in the discussion portion of the, the event, you are notifying everybody that's been invited to that event about that thing. They all get a notification. They all get one of these little red squares in their, their notice, notifications that somebody posted in this event page. So this is where the opportunity is to actually post content about what you are doing, your band, whatever it is, whatever your art you're making. Post something you know, and I highly encourage you to make sure it's compelling content. Don't just post some random stupid something. Post something compelling. Post something. Post. Now, I believe it's a great place to actually post about other shows you're playing working up to this show. If you're playing a show three weeks beforehand, say, come to that show to look, you know, check it out. Or if you had a, some video from that show that's really well made, again, you know, I've said before, but I'm don't think single camera video does any good for you. You want to have more than one camera when you're creating video content for your, really any project, but I'm talking this in the world of being in a band. You need more than one camera and then cutting in between those shots and making a compelling thing. Single camera does not compel anybody to want to come see you. You need more than one camera and, and good quality audio to show the dynamics of what you're doing at your live show. So you want to throw that, you know, make, cut, a, cut a video about what you did on your last show, post it here. If you did an interview with somebody, like I do a podcast, so it's a great place. Like, oh, we did this podcast with, you know, we're on the street. Let's post it in the event page so people can learn more about us and get excited to come. And then, so whenever, when all, like say there's three bands on a bill, when all three bands, and I'd say post once a week. If each band posts once a week, it doesn't over saturate it doesn't get too crazy because if you're posting daily then suddenly everybody's like fuck turn this off please i do not want to see these all the time so you have to be sparing about it but it's a right now nobody's using it so if you do this you're going to be one of the ones that's going to take advantage of it the most because really what i've always said about any kind of promotion you're not really promoting for the show that you're playing you're promoting for 10 shows down the line so you're just getting name recognition out there you're just keeping your name out there so that's why you want to make sure whatever you're posting is compelling is is something that people actually want to know about and it's not just bullshit really you want to post things that peep that will hopefully entice people to want to learn more about you some interview that you're involved with some you know Something you recorded with somebody else, like a musical thing, some video you made that's compelling in some way. If it's a live video, make sure it's compelling. Make sure it's like more than one camera type of thing. Or if it's a music video, make sure you did a really good job on it and post it there. But like I said, do it like once a week up to the show. That's why if you if you're like a month out of the show, make sure you know post four posts and each band does four posts. You know, there's twelve posts. It's pretty good. And then hopefully. After those posts, one of the things that you want to do is interact to the other band's posts. So interaction, that's where the viralness happens. If you start interacting, if you look like you are part of this you know, show as a unit, as all the bands are in it together, that makes the people that you've invited go, hey, my friend that... I don't know these other bands, but I know my friend's band, and I know my friend, and he seems to be really excited about these other bands. Maybe they're good. Maybe they're something that I should be excited about as well. People like things because other people like them. It's very rare that people like something in a vacuum and have never because nobody's ever heard of it. Because you get 
excited about things because you see other people are getting excited about things. That's pretty much the general rule. So if all the acts and all the bands on a lineup are getting excited for each other, that'll spread out to the people, their fan bases will then start to get excited for the other bands and the other things on the lineup. So that's big. I think that pretty much wraps it up. So one other piece of it is the reason it's so important to have every band, everybody invite all their people to one event page is it's an opportunity to actually show and give support to the scene that you're involved with. If you, all the bands invite people, you're sharing audiences. And when you do that thing I told you about posting content on the event page in the discussion part of it, you're notifying everybody that was invited, so you're notifying other audiences besides your own. And that's where we as a community can support each other in using social networks and using Facebook event pages by allowing access to our audiences to other audiences. So it's like how much work are you willing to do to help out your your fellow bandmates, your fellow bands in your scene. And this is one way you can do it, and it's an easy way to do it. It doesn't take a lot of work to support your community by using event pages this way. So just real quick, let's try to bullet point this out. One event page per show. Add the event page to your band page. Everyone involved in the event adds their 500, as many people as you can, their 500 or whatever people to the event. Posting on the event creates an opportunity to share content, a free way to share content about your band. and You don't have to pay. And then also making sure everyone is interacting with each other's posts. Interact with the posts. Let everybody know that everyone is excited about these events. All right, I think that does it. I'm the Zim from Word on the Street and the band The Zim and A-Rock in Seattle, Washington. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube page. Check out my podcast, Word on the Street podcast.com. All right. Thanks a lot. Peace.